Okay, now this is the FC Pro event final. Um, I'll leave a link down below in the description so you can watch it, the full video in your own time, should I say. There's going to be a lot of starting and stopping and a lot of stuttering as well. So I just want to say that now. So if you haven't watched this before, I'd recommend just going ahead and trying and watching it yourself because I'm going to be stuttering, stopping and starting it with a lot of analysis. Now, um, when you first start, you know, you have to remember, this is a final, but this is very interesting because both of these players in this final, they kind of went for it. Um, normally you would see maybe a bit more conservative final, maybe you wouldn't see as many goals, um, but you can see everything that we've taught you. See, look, basics, taking elastic touches away. Can you make the pass? Only make it forward if you can. And you can see even here on the top pro level, it's a loss of the ball. Should that pass be made? No, but that player thought you could make that pass. This is just normal things. The key thing is recovery. You can see here when the ball was lost, you can see straight away using Bruno Fernandes with the luck with the bounce and got the ball again. What happened here? Same thing. So you can see even the top tier, the best players inside the game are subject to making mistakes. The key thing is just recovering from those mistakes. When you're a good player, you can kind of get away with it because you still have the rest of the pitch to recover. If you're new to the game, make a mistake like here, you could be in trouble like here. We know here, where should the PH is in taking a touch? It should have taken a touch away or at least on this side because this player is far away. But realistically, around 7 o'clock, takes it upwards and rightly so deserves to lose the ball. Of course, the game had just started and so on, but these are just a few things to bear in mind. Like you see a quick one, two there, and you can see patience, patience, patience using R9 deception. Then you can see Anders Verang just lost the ball over there as well. And you can see here straight away. Now you can see this is something that's quite common. Something you'll learn when you do it on your level, uh, when you're up in your games, that everything works um, that you would see in this clip, but it would just also depend on how you execute it. You can see for example like here, um, good tackle from the opponent. And you can see here straight away, gets the ball, does that one too. Then you can see Bruno Fernandes. The reason this pass was made is one of two ways. Number one, as you can see, this player is basically about to be, well, this player is going to lose the ball, right? This player is about to go past that player, but it's too early. So ideally, you'd want to wait, as I said, for owner to be at least on side or just in front where the last defender is keeping it on. But you can see in this situation, it was used just to get out of that situation. You know, you don't want to take a risk. You lose the ball here, you could be in big, big trouble. So it's better to pass the ball out of that situation or lob the ball going forward as opposed to then taking a the risk. But you can see this is the first couple of minutes. Don't forget, this is the highest nerves. When you're playing online, it's completely different to when you're playing like in a LAN or a tournament. Um, it's completely different. You can see a run out with the center back there. It's not something I'd recommend. At pro level, it's completely different because they know the exact time to run out. Good defending there. You can see like Kevin De Bruyne gets the ball back. Davies taking a touch away and very unlucky with the pass. You can even see a top player, top tier player like Davies can make those mistakes. And that is why when you get the ball in these situations, this is why we say to you, look here, take a touch properly and clear the player. You see, when you're like taking a touch here like this on the left-hand side, do you see how the player's off balance at this point here? Like that. Now it's very unlucky. That player and Anders is applying pressure. This can sometimes happen. These are just certain things that I wanted to mention to you that the top tier players, the pro players, even at a pro event, and technically they play a different version of FC. It's technically the same version that we play, but there's small changes. You won't notice it, but mainly in terms of servers, the way the game feels quicker, a lot of pros report to the game feels different. So that's just something things to bear in mind. So even this is like the perfect clean cut edition, the more the most intricate and best edition that FC can actually EA can actually give us. And you can see you can get a bit BS. That is a bit unlucky there. A nice shot and good save here by Lois. Got a corner here. You can see mistakes all around. Alexia does get that space and she does run forward. You can see she's got no runners with her. So you, you see how she took that and sort of touch backwards. You see that? Did a fake shot stop and then made that pass backwards because you see there was no one with, with her. A lot of players here would go and they would try to run, keep running down the wing. They'll think they're going to run forever. This player is not this, this, this player is not smart. I mean, this player is very smart. They're not stupid. You have to remember, they know every single angle. When's the exact point? Anders here, at this point, trying to win the ball. And PH Zin understands that. And then pass the ball backwards, keeping the ball safe, not losing the ball. As you can see, being patient. Can you make guaranteed pass? And you can see here, one, twos. Waiting for the overlap. But then going backwards. Kevin Boy does make a perfect L1 triangle. Davies. 
Now, I'm going to pause it just over here. Now, where this is very interesting was you see at this point when Davies got the ball, Davies span around here. Now, when Davies span around, he then did the L1 plus X pass. So now Davies is making a run. What other players will try to do is they'll do another L1 trigger and they'll try to force that pass and force that run. Now, what this player did is he didn't do an L1 trigger to Ronaldo. That way, Ronaldo, R9, keeps jogging. And as you can see, he's waiting for Davies to overlap. You see that? Then he goes backwards. And you can see there's two players in contention there. Then it's all about timing. You see that? So he's making the pass. And if you look at the defender, the defender's on the back foot. The defender's over here is on the back foot. So it's all about waiting the perfect timing gets the KDB and then launches it so by the time the pass has been made even if you switch that player and then you run back in time you you need to then turn around fully and then recover so that is how you can take someone on the through ball in behind and when the ball is down the wing you can see it's a touch inwards simple look here no control sprint nothing like this look, listen simple elastic touch left then to the right then down and then you can see here bit unlucky with the player switch and then a simple pass across goal so you can see sometimes it's the most basics basics of play here to get the ball into the situation um but you can see a simple l1 and triangle rating of course when you do push your fullback like that going forward there's a risk you're going to take that you might lose the ball but these are just certain things just to bear in mind and you can see there I'm um, giving a little spot to his coach. That's Anders, um, the young wonder kid as well. We're going to skip into this. And you can see shift from kickoffs. Now Anders is now on the back foot. But note how Anders doesn't take a risk. So don't forget, this is technically... Um, when it comes to games like this, it's much more at stake. You can see on the opposite side. You see how that left wing back is completely free. See on the opposite side over here? Just over there. So you can see he's waiting, being patient. That outlet is available. And you can see a bit of, uh, this is what I like to call, um, it's, this is a very advanced thing with a teammate container in case you're wondering what this is. So basically what it is, is that you're basically, when the ball is played over there, is you're basically closing the gap. So you can see here, using this player, but the reason why is because he wanted to bring this player forward and apply teammate contain with that player. They basically want to stop the ball going into this area. There's one of two reasons. Number one, this is the finesse shot territory, but on the pro scene, more notably the Travella shot, um, which you might see in the video on the channel, already on the Patreon. So they've got to be careful because when the ball gets into this area, you can get the ball to even R9, do a skill move, and then take a shot. So the key thing is trying to avoid the ball getting into this position as best as you can. And you can see then PH Zin then changes to a player, so he's ready to be aggressive because... If you need to, you have to go and you have to block that Travella angle. That's just something to mention, for, just bear in mind for your elite players. You can see here, Pete Zin again, big, big mistake. And Anders then capitalizes. So you can see here, Anders, <laughs> typically known. I mean, to be honest, I do like this kid. There. He's, he has a lot of hate and he does do a good job against it, using the hate on his side. Um, but you can see, look, a big, big mistake from Pete Zin. You can see this is the mistake that maybe you would do. And you can see sometimes even on the pro end with nerves, these things still happen as well. You see Davies has the ball here. Now he's probably waiting. Now, I'm not too sure what Pit Zinn was doing here. Maybe he was looking at the radar, just seeing what he could formulate. You can see his eyes. He's looking at Davies at the top. I'm not too sure. But maybe because he thought that R9. So you can see Anders is doing the smart thing here now. You see what Anders is doing. Watch when Anders loses the ball. You can see with R9, he then applies teammate contain. So he's running back at this player using teammate contain to apply pressure there. Then he's switching to R9 and he's anticipating the ball is going to be forced backwards. You see that? So he's using teammate contain to close the gap and he's manually moving the player across there. And then once R9 is in that position, he's now cut that pass lane. He switches back to Mbappe and you can see PH in. Now, is it a bit of unlucky? Maybe. I'm not too sure here. We can kind of go back. At that point, this is very unlucky, but... I would say just about here. When you take a touch here, especially when you take a touch like this, you got to take a touch completely away. You see, because this is something that is, is very, very hard because sometimes the animations can be very inconsistent. But you see, when the ball is over here, if you just do a simple left stick touch away early, that's why I say take a touch away earlier. 
This player realistically should have gone like this, lobbed back to the goalkeeper, and then gone to this player over there. That would have been the safest option. But you can see what Piet Zin does, he takes a touch backwards, not to the left-hand side. You know, if you look at, think, look at, think about angle of failure, remember I said to you, in terms of the risk, the risk is going to be, here it will be the danger zone where you don't want to take a touch. But this zone over here, these are yellow zones. Take a touch in these areas, your opponent can still get the ball, there's no guarantee, but you can see that touch gets played that way. See that? As opposed to left. And that's what's enough. And although that player, maybe his foot was there or just in the way, Mbappe got a bit lucky with that tackle and is able to make a goal out of nothing. So that's why I say if you're going to make that mistake, you make that mistake anywhere else on the pitch. Don't make that mistake in your own half. It's too risky. It's too risky to make that mistake. You've got to be safe when you're making a mistake just about here. And it's enough to get a goal and there's a simple passing inside the box once you lose the ball in this situation it's almost impossible to defend maybe you can try to cut stop the cut back over there but realistically you can see a ball roll pass goes around second pass and even if you try to guess the right way very 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 there's very low chance that you'll actually tr actually get the ball back here just because simply the way the players are the way the players are moving the how much you're outnumbered and uh, you can see a nice player lock there and you can see again another mystic of Peter Zinn. This can happen. This is nerves. Don't forget, this is a LAN event. Um, it's completely different than playing at home in your armchair or in your chair or whatever. You're in a complete different setup. You've got the crowd in the background. You can hear the commentator's voice. You can hear all these things that all affect the gameplay. You can see this is switched. I'd always teach you, for example, when the ball is at this side over here, we go for this switch just over here. Just switch just over there. That switch over there is very, very important because that switch allows you to maneuver the ball opposite to the opposite side. So you can see, for example, like here, Davies gets the ball, for example, in this area like so, over here, sees the situation, sees there's no one to pass the ball to, and you can see because the player team is overloaded on this side, Davies, the opposite side, then switches the ball to owner. Owner gets the pass. Now, the first touch here is important. The way you judge the first touch, whether it should be forward or backwards, depends on a few things. It depends on where this player is. Now, if this player was one centimeter, or not even a centimeter, a couple of yards to the left-hand side, then owner can run straight towards goal. At this point, you'd always expect your opponent to then, so let's say you're this player over here, you'd always expect your 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 player, um, your opponent to go towards the right-hand side. So the first instance would be towards the right-hand side. And if the player was, for example, over here, you'd almost always try taking a touch away because you would lose the ball. A lot of new players here, they try to force the ball and run down the wing. It's better to turn the ball around and because that way, if you turn like this and your opponent copies you, then you can just rotate back around again. So that is why the positioning of this play is so important. So when the ball arrives in the air, that is when you make a decision. So you can see, for example, like here, I know that player is going to get that ball probably, so I'll take a touch backwards. And you can see what happens here. PH in, takes that touch, and then takes touch away. And, and this, very, very good play. Can't really see it probably because of the lag here. But you can see that touch was just basically, I think it was just taken normally. It wasn't less sick touch, maybe maybe a bit to the down, downhand side. And then maybe he didn't expect it. So this is more on the higher level thing. So what people do is, everyone knows you're always going to go on the right-hand side. You see that with the defender? You know he's going to go on the right-hand side. They PH in trying to do the opposite, but an Anders then cuts. Because an Anders also knows... That on on this is a pro level, people are always going to cut away when you have a player like let's say Anders defenders over there. You know there's a player there, so you cut away. So Anders reads that. As soon as that is a heavy touch, goes on on the inside, reads the play, and wins the ball back. Gets the ball straight away. Does a quick one two. Then you can see that's that one two and very very unlikely to pass. Wins the ball back again. Anders again gets the ball pass the ball to Davies. There's a ball roll and nearly, 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 very, very nice opportunity here. What when this is this is why this L1 trigger, as you can see at this point, this is why the L1 trigger is the most important thing. You see where the ball is here, Alexa does a one-two, Alexa makes that run. Then gets the ball over here with Graham. Then there's another one, two. So now you've got one, two runners, plus technically the third player if you make that run as well. Then you can see now you've got a three versus two situation down the wing. Alexia makes the pass. She misses the pass, wins the ball back. Then you can see Davies gets the ball here. Now, this is what's important. There's two things you can do here. You can do an L1 trigger, but then the player would run a bit more faster. But you can see what Anders does here is he waits, he waits, he waits. Waits for the opportunity. Then press the L1 button, whether it's a bit later, to push so that player is not offside. 
and then there's a pass. You could try to do a driven pass here. Um, it would probably be a bit better, but you can see just very, very unlucky with that ball and that chance over there. You see owner, you can see then triggered, you can see owner then making a run, and then that pass gets made. So you see how a lot of these pro players, they trigger the play, a beautiful cross, and then ends up getting a goal. Now I want to bring this back to you. This is something that I don't advocate is bringing your full backs going forward. Now I know on the pro scene, it's a complete different thing. But on the casual scene, it's different altogether. And the reason why is most people, when they push their full back going forward, if they lose the ball, they will get counter attacked from that, from that area. Pros know the exact time when to bring a right center mid and when to cover for that role. That's why it's very, very important. But you can see, especially someone like owner, a team of the year player has got the stamina, can run up and down the pitch the entire time. So you can see owner here. Does that one too, and she was a very good card. That's why I actually wanted to buy her and play in centre mid, because for 1.4 million, she was such a good card, but now she's gone to 2.2 million. But when she was 1.4, I should have probably bought her, because I knew, as you, if you know me in old school, if you're an old school viewer of mine, you know that I always play these team of the year, left back, right backs, in centre mid, because sometimes they're even better than some of the actual uh, team of the year centre mid cards, because full backs, typically speaking, do everything, got pace, defending, shooting, passing. Bruno Fernandes, you can see, takes a touch away. You see that? So you can see when the ball comes, Bruno Fernandes at 1-2, takes a touch away here. And then you can see owner. Then you can see, doesn't make a pass to owner. You see, because if you make a pass to owner and then you make a pass again, that slows owner down. So that is why you want to avoid owner because that way, if you just made the pass and owner just keeps running, but if you pass the ball to owner, she now has to take another touch and you've got to do another one, two again and the whole situation can change. So you can see, does the L1 trigger early, then makes the pass to Mbappe, then makes the pass to R9 and then now Anders realises he's, he's in trouble because there's a player in the middle and then you can see owner's already beating the defender, perfect timing of a through ball and then you can see at this point, what's happening here at this point, just here. This is something that I do a lot. PH in, left down locks. This is how you could force these two players to make a run. When you make a run, you touch the ball at position X. We're going to call this A, B, and C, okay? These are the points that you touch the ball when owner is running, okay? If you're jogging, you have small micro movements. Now, if you make a pass at exactly this point, let's say where this line is over here, some of you may know this, the yellow, when you're, when you're left at dribbling only, will make the pass straight away. However, you have to wait until you take a touch, the ball touches the foot before you make the pass. So the pass is made much later when you're running in a stride. This is what's called the stride of the run. However, during this stride, your player is running from A to B. So technically, if you move your left analog stick all over the place, let's say from here to here, let's say from position one to position two, you held your left analog stick and you flick the left analog stick upwards and you press the L and you press the L1 button as well. You're telling the game, I want these two players to make a run going forwards. So I'll press the L1 button two times. So flick the left analog stick up and press the L1 button. Then you may say to me, hang on then why doesn't owner run upwards? Because you're using a left analog stick, because left analog stick is also used to control movement. But the reason why owner doesn't run forward is because she's already in her stride. The game knows where the ball is, so the game basically aim locks your player towards the ball. So you can try this. If you play a through ball, try using your left analog stick and running away in opposite direction. Run in the opposite direction. And you will see the game will still force your player towards the ball. So that is why when you're running in the stride, the key point, let's say you're running from point A to point B, if you want to trigger this two players to make a run, after you've pushed the ball forward, like so like here, I'll show you it's about, let's say the player was taking a touch, for example like here, if owner touched the ball, it will be in the stride. But because it's a through ball and the player is running onto it, you can do it at any time because the player has not reached the ball yet. You see that? So if the, if owner touched the ball, you'll have to do it, for example, in between these zones over here, just not at the edges, you see? Just not at these edge points because that is when the game will actually take a touch going upwards. But because owner hasn't touched the ball yet, click the left hand lock stick upwards. And then what you do is you press the L1 button and you press it twice because you want these two players to make runs. This is what you can see, both their hands are sticking out. They're saying, I'm making that run. I'm making that darting run into the box. Then you run down the wing, and then here you have two options. There's two types of passes you can do in this situation. You could do a through ball, 
um, which would be the most simplest thing to do. Um, sometimes with a through ball, sometimes the ball gets there too quickly because when the ball moves on the ground, it moves the fastest. Remember that the ball moves the fastest. But also, when something like that happens, if a goalkeeper comes out, let's say, and let's say the ball the ball gets past, the goalkeeper can come out and it can potentially block the shot. The second thing you can do is elevate the pass. Now, when you elevate the pass, the ball takes longer to reach this. So let's say from, from position A to position B, a simple regular X or through ball, the ball will move quickly. Let's just say, for example, it will get there in 0 0.5 seconds. But if you do an, a double X, so this is a double triangle, which is a lofted through ball like this, or you do an L1 plus triangle, for example, all of those will give the ball some airtime and it will take some time for the ball to reach. So you can see I'm like here, it gives time for the ball to reach and then it kind of matches the player. So it depends where Haaland is. If Haaland was, for example, over here, at this point, a regular pass would have sufficed because that's all you need. But because Haaland is far away, you've got to play for time. That is why you need the elevated ball in this situation. But there's another thing that people don't realize as well. When the ball's in this situation over here, there's a chance Davies can get the ball. Now, Davies is a short player. Haaland is a taller player. So the benefit of having a ball in the air is Davies won't be able to get the header also. That's number one. And number two, the ball is already elevated. So when you take a shot, the shot would be an elevated volley or a lob shot. Now that means that means if the goalkeeper comes out and the goalkeeper does come out and it does get on the ground and gets close to you, at least the ball will be in the air from where your player is standing. So when you hit the ball or you headed the ball in, then the ball is elevated and will go in the, the net. It will go over the goalkeeper. So that's one reason why players might do it. I'm not too sure why I did it, but that's what that's one of the reasons why I would do it. And the second thing I would say here, if I go back just at this point here, the second thing is, you can see here, when you make this pass, the pass is set by Davies as well. By crossing the ball here, doing a lob pass on L1 triangle, the ball is elevated, goes above Davies' head, and because the goalkeeper doesn't come out hand, there's time to touch the ball, and then you just take a shot towards goal. So you can see the importance, the very much the importance of the small decision-making thing, but this is top-tier elite level. A lot of players won't understand um, when and where to do this, especially when you're new to the game, but don't worry, this will come to you over time. Don't when you go into the game, you might practice this. You might be like, oh, it's not coming to me. Once you understand, you learn the game. You learn. It's like trying to drive, like driving a car. Sometimes when you, when you first drive your car for the first time, you try to turn the corner. You might turn the corner too acutely. You might overturn it. You might hit the pavement. But once you understand how the car moves, how the steering wheel moves, you know the exact movement to use, then you would get used to it. So these are just some things that will come towards you as you play the game more and more and more. So don't, don't, don't worry. That will come with time. Then we go into the second half. Now you can see now, Anders again, back on the loss, sees a pass in the middle, Graham, and fantastic goal. Fantastic goal. Very, very good goal. This is cold ice. Yes, you can argue a bit of a kickoff, but it doesn't really matter. You can see here, the game switch in a moment, kickoff, you can see the ball, L1 trigger, then the right back push forward. Again, this is very important. Again, this L1 trigger seems insignificant, but it's something that you might see me, I do this a lot. The L1 trigger, if you make a pass to a player there, they're going to be behind the ball. But you can see if the, if the player is making it one, when you make an L1 trigger, the player will get the ball at this position as opposed to this position, and therefore it will make, it will make it easier for you to then to beat this defender. Because if the ball is over here, then you run forward, your opponent can defend against this and bring this player into play with teammate contain. But when you press the L1 button, you're pushing the, the ball going forward, you're pushing the player so going forward, should I say, and then when you make the pass, the player receives the pass at a more forward position, and as you can see, you can then run forward unobstructed because that player can't get there in time. These small, small, this I say to the L1 trigger is the most important thing, guys. It doesn't matter what anyone else tells you, in my opinion, L1 trigger is the most important skill move well, not skill move, skill in terms of attacking, should I say. Very, very good dribbling, good left stick moving, bad defending, I would say, with Peterson. Maybe because he's just on the, just from the kickoff, you can see here, ends up trying to recover here, uses teammate contain, does the right thing because he's covering that pass over there. But I think where the mistake was made at this point was just over here. Bit of unlucky. So you can see that player, he tries to maybe, he's waiting for the pass. You see, he's probably waiting for that driven pass to go towards the player. So he's trying to intercept it and trying to read it. But you see, it's that switch over there, that small switch that made that mistake because then Mbappe could make the pass, make the pass away. Then here, this situation, it's a risky one. Now, me personally, even though it's not a good idea, I would always trace the run because it's the safest thing to do. 
It's all about decision making here. I'm not doubting that Paige Zinn is a well, much better player than me, more experienced than me in this situation, but I'd always track that run. Maybe the reason why he didn't is because he was worried that Kevin De Bueno was going to get into this position and do a Traveller shot. But then the goalkeeper couldn't move to anticipate for that. So I'm not too quite sure here. But you can see then he ends up covering that gap and running back. And then the pass gets open up here. And it's a bit unlucky. It's a very good attack here. The attack is moving faster. But maybe in this situation here, it's a it's a bit of a... It's, it's not the wrong thing to do. Because when you're standing here, you're doing two things, by the way. What Piet Zin here is doing in, in this situation is he's covering that pass. So stopping the pass. Unless that's a through ball like there, then that player can get the ball and then make the cutback. That's what I would personally fear if that was me playing. But... This is a very smart positioning because he can then A, stop the pass, and B, if Kevin De Bruyne tries to make um, a pass to R9 later on, he can close the gap. But also you can stop the, the let's say R9 has gone beyond that play and he and Kevin De Bruyne goes here, you can always come back and then you can defend that situation. So I think it's a really good goal here. Um, it's just very, very unlucky that that pass was made into the middle. The middle then, and by the time you switch, you've got to make a choice Anders then goes on the inside and then takes the goal. So actually, no, I wouldn't really say it's bad defending. I would say it's good defending. It's a good defending that could, that could cause anyone to make a mistake. But of course, that small mistake was that switch over there. Just that switch over there. But at this point, you can't really do much because you already passed them. That's why I say to you, like you know, especially at, when you're learning the game, be careful when you use teammate contain. Of course, this is, again, pro level. I want to emphasize that. But you've got to say be careful because you know, you're know you tracking that player. You're pushing that player going forward. You're trying to win that ball there. Then you can see at this point, then your defensive line is broken in half. I think this is the point I think people are the weakest. When you can get the ball in between the midfield line and you have your players there, I think that's when it's a 4v4 and it's the most dangerous for any player. So that's something I just want, to bet, want you to bear in mind. But again, I think it's a fantastic goal. You can't really fault PH in. Maybe you could have, maybe if you didn't switch in time, but you can't fault the goal. That was a very good goal, in my opinion. Maybe it's a small mistake, just a small mistake from PH in there. Um, some, some people will probably say to me, it's not a mistake, but if I if I had to classify, I would just say just that switch over there. One thing you can learn from this is how quick Anders moves the ball. When the ball gets to this situation over here, you can see he cuts the ball backwards here, as kind of sees that situation. You know what, maybe I'm looking back at this, maybe this also do with the teammate contained player choice, because maybe what, what Zinn wanted to do was, when the ball was here, he wanted to use teammate contained to apply pressure with Davies as opposed to KDB. Maybe looking back at it, that's the way, because that's what I would have done. So maybe he was actually trying to use teammate contained with Davies, but it didn't work out, and that's why he switched, because he got con the game kind of screwed him over in that situation, and it didn't happen. His because a teammate contain is kind of allocated randomly. It's kind of the closest player um, to the ball and takes a few other things into account, like which player you're selecting and so other things. So I'm not too sure in that situation. I'm not too sure what will happen over there. But that's just something just to bear in mind. I mean, the ball comes in at the end of the day. That's a fantastic guard for now. That's a very, very good goal for Mr. Anders. And of course, comes with his celebration. And you can see Peter Zinn will get a bit of that taste of that... Um, Taste of that revenge later on, and you can see as we go into the second, second, oh, second, so I say second half or second two-two, you can see again doesn't make a mistake, keeping it simple, can switch to Bournemouth. If you can't go forward, here's the L1 trigger, can't go forward again, and then he sees that pass. So you see, for example, like here, there's two things: the L1 trigger, he knows that he can't make that pass now, so he pretends to go to to KDB in expect to switch the ball. So you can see Anders. Is kind of kind of used to it at the same time. Anders knows there's a potential possibility that the ball can be switched. But that's but the reason we don't change this player straight away is because that's not the danger area. The danger area is that Dave is running it behind. You can see it's all about timing. And you see that pass is made. Look at the radar. Just before Dave is offside, that pass has been made. Perfect player like KDB can launch the ball. What's actually very effective with this, you there's two types. L1 triangles work very well here. But so do a lob passes. They work very well. I like to use precision lob pass here because that way you can dictate where the ball's going to be. And here you can go forward and keeps running, makes the pass backwards. And very, very unlucky here. Very, very unlucky when the ball comes here. Look, you can see here in this situation, 
gets the ball, takes a touch downwards. Now, because the defender is not here, that's when, again, Davies will go back. Because the, the Davies is much more in front, he can go forward. Again, doesn't take a touch down here. This is the mistake people make is they try to go inside the box. You keep running that way. That way you keep and you maintain a distance between the two players. Gets the ball, takes a touch. More of like a 45-degree angle, actually. Tries to get that. That's the old school speed boost. Knows the exact angle. Then makes that pass inwards. Perfect. Does that second pass here. And is a bit unlucky here. I don't know, the touch kind of went behind Haaland's feet there and the ball went through his foot. Very, very unlucky. Maybe it would have been better if... Maybe Haaland could have even shot there first time, actually. Let's have a look. Go back here. Just bring it back. Maybe Haaland could have shot, but there's just too many things to think about in this situation. Maybe when you look back, you would say this player could have shot, but I think you ought to take a touch there. I understand why that player did that. Got a bit unlucky. The game did screw them over in that situation. Again, running back, using team that contains C, using that player, that Hullet as that player, keeping it safe, taking a touch away. Gets the ball with Alexia. Waiting for Davies to make that run. See, waiting, 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 waiting. Doesn't make that pass. Then, make, then goes backwards. Sees Davies now. Then makes that pass going forward. Makes. So this is interesting as well. You can see he's playing the 4-3-2-1. Similar formation. But he's, he's got Davies on stay back while attacking. The right centre mid. Sorry the right the right back is the one that's on. Kind of during the attack. So you can see at just this point over here. When he gets the ball back here. Touch here. Does a 1-2. So you can see here he's waiting for Davies. And you see also on a pro level. And his management and coach, uh, I'm sure, um, and his management and coach has probably looked, this because this is what I do sometimes for pro players, sometimes ask me for freelance work. Um, they, they ask me to analyse opponents as well. I've done that for a few actually pro players. Um, I've analysed opponents. And they would he would probably know that Peterson does this quite a lot um, in, in between the space between the games. He knows Peterson is going to do that a lot. So he's expecting and he's waiting for that three balls. And there's knows that Peterson has been doing it the entire game. So you can see Peterson use that to his advantage. Can't make the pass. But then when, when Davies goes offside, this is the most important thing. Davies becomes unmarked. That's the benefit when you trigger someone going forward. Even if you trigger someone going forward, and let's say, for example, you can't pass the ball to them, don't ignore them. If you see a player like this, because the defensive line has to hold. The defense has to hold the line. Once defense holds the line, Davies is offside. He's going to run back to his position. You see that? He's going to run back to his left back position. But in between the space, when he's running from out offside to back to his position, there's a small moment where he's going to leave the back four and, and be in between the midfield and the back four. That is the area where you want to pass the ball and pounce. Remember this. If a player gets... Even if you trigger a strike offside, the same thing happens. When they come back onside, they are unmarked for a split second. So you wait for that situation. You can see there, that's the point where Davies is offside. Maybe Peters in his practice this in his gameplay. He knows if he can't make the pass, no fear. If that pass can't be made... That player is going to come back on side. He has got to wait for that situation. And then you can see Davies then comes in. You can see it's a 4v4. Brings the ball going backwards. Maybe he could have passed the ball to Arnhem. Could he pass R9 there? Maybe could have. But maybe would have been a, diff a tough one. Because then Anders would have probably switched player early. Ends up going the back. Recycling the ball. See an opportunity. Again, not panicking. This is the thing. Recycling the ball. Gets the ball with Davies. Gets the ball with Haaland. Less the dribbling. Just waiting. See? This one I'm trying to say, you can't always expect to go forward. That's a nice pass from here from R9. It's all about recycling the ball, trying to get the ball inside the box. Ball goes to R9. A bit unlucky, you can try to get a skill move or something like that. That's, probably, that's a good thing with someone like Maldini and BVD. They're very tall. They've got the extra length. You can see again, one twos here. Again, L1 trigger. You can see that player's making a run in behind. Davies gets the ball, not panicking. Switching the ball to the other side, Anders. Waiting, 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 waiting. See if you can bait a player. Sees the pass in the middle. Nice one, two backwards. Makes a pass on the opposite side again. Switching the play. Now he's got a three versus two down the wing. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Does that one, two. Sees a, see that player making the run. And unfortunately makes a mistake. Owner, same thing. Running because of space. Does that one, two. So owner's making that run. This time sees Mbappe. There's L1 trigger. Mbappe's got to make a cut back now. Exactly. Perfect. Pass upwards. Pass in the middle. Okay, a bit unlucky. So one thing that could have been done over here was that pass in the middle. But maybe, as you can see, Anders probably read that. Maybe this player wanted to flick the ball above that player's head. I'm not actually too sure. Maybe Peterson 
to kind of practice something here. He wanted to flick the ball. Maybe expected Davies to go there. I'm not. I'm not actually not too sure to be honest. Or maybe just a bit unlucky um, in that situation with the right stick switch or whatever kind of went through. Nice speed boost. Ono then making a run going backwards. Ono then sees the ball. Then you can see Ono then wins the ball. There's a ball roll. Brings the ball back. L1 trigger. Mbappe makes that run. Makes the pass into the middle. Haaland waiting, 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 waiting. Makes the pass. Alexia does a step over and gets that speed boost. And very, very unlucky not to get that goal. But this is the thing with someone like Alexia. Amazing first touch over here. You can see just at this point over there. Haaland actually did a very, very good job to actually hold on to the ball here. Just a quick thing here. What I'd recommend when you defend the situation, um, be careful with, with using your centre mids uh, in a situation. It's it's quite risky, especially when you're behind the ball, unless your timing is 10-10. So if you're watching this, this is why I advise people, especially when you're like in elite division and below, just be careful. Sometimes you might have to hold your, def your defensive line and just hold the line basically and run back. Um, but you can see here, Haaland did, Haaland did hold the ball. And has done um, a good pass past Alexia's feet. Alexia does a step over, gets that speed boost, and should have probably been a goal there. But you can see just about here. Now, there's something also to mention as well. Why doesn't this player do a through ball? Um, people always ask this question. The reason why I don't do it is because when the ball, you can kind of run onto the ball, but this is the issue. When the through ball goes to about here, Alexia can get the ball, but then Maldini can kind of just run straight across backwards and defend the chance. But when the ball comes to the player's feet, at this point, you can basically do a speed boost or you can do a skill move to give you the gap here. And you can see a simple right stick, step over, gets that speed boost, and then with a five star, almost gets it into the back of the net. Very, very unlucky there. And you can see nice and picked in, anticipating the ball, trying to apply pressure. You can see holding the line now, running backwards, using KDB, running back, covering that pass, made that slight mistake there, but recovered very, very well. And then gets the ball into the middle. Good defending with, with Virgil van Dijk and very good teammate contain, so as I like to call, closing the gap. So I can see that there. So you can see using teammate contain and using Van Dyke because you see if that player commits, that player could also pass to Van Dyke. So what you're doing is you're kind of stuffing that player. So they kind of, if they are going to take a shot, you're you're blocking that player in. They don't take a shot. At least you're blocking the pass here to R9, and that is how you can defend that situation as well. Gone for the corner. No tactic here. Alexio can do a Travella there. Gets the ball to Graham Hansen. Very unfortunate, tries to do a shot across goal. And you can see here, um, this is the goal that was shown with a speed boost. Or nearly a chance with the speed boost, nearly got the rebound as well. You can see the same thing here. You can see what's echoed in the first half from Peter Zinn. Same thing here, the right back's gone forward. You can see Peter Zinn is waiting, 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 waiting. You can see the right back has actually gone offside there. You see Davies, have a look. Davies, well, owner, should I say, sorry, is offside. But she's going to come back on. And maybe he's waiting for that player to be onside again. Maybe. Gets the pass to Davies. See space in front. Takes touch back. You can do a 1-2 backwards now. Does that 1-2. Does that triple up down the wing? You see that triple up. Now he's just got to wait. And he decides to be aggressive. And maybe he thought Anders couldn't, could get the ball there. Didn't stop. Gets the ball. Davies got to go back. And I'll say, been unlucky with the touch. Got to be careful with that touch you got to take. Again here, running back with... This is very good as well. Something you can learn. I want to cut back to this in like 10 seconds. Good defending here. Holding the line. Trying to cut the finesse shot angle. I mean, Travella shot angle. Now, this is something just to remember. A lot of players, to make the mistake here, they use Virgil van Dijk. But you see, now this player is running nowhere. Now, what a lot of players don't realize is by using Virgil van Dijk, you have two center backs, okay? And there's two players into the middle. Now, Virgil van Dijk is over here. That's going to make you open for these two players and have a 2v1. So once Virgil, once this player is contained, you want to let go of Virgil van Dijk. And then, or you can run back manually with him and use teammate contained with Davies. That way, the back four gets reunited again. And Davies is the only person that's, that's what Davies is the only person that's worrying about the right back. Who's like the, the right attack in middle, in this case, R9. So you can see what happens here. This is something you can learn from these top tier pro players. I do this quite a lot um, as well. Remember, I always tell you to always to reform your line. You can see when Virgil van Dijk has the ball there, your bit of teammate contained. Let's go. So using Matt, um, Hullet, should I say. So he's he's understanding 
that this is the L1 triangle, it can go to either one of these two players. This player knows it can go to this player here or it can go to this player here. So it's controlling their main player. But this way you let go of Virgil van Dijk. So Virgil van Dijk will naturally go back to position to reunite with Hullet and man Mark Mbappe. You see that? So you can see like here, Virgil van Dijk's gone, gone back and reunited. He's now gone for Mbappe because that's the furthest player here. And if that pass does come in, then he can also run back. Now, I'll tell you one mistake I think Anders made on this area over here. This is why I think all pro players should learn precision shoots, a precision lob pass inside out. One thing I see from pro players that I don't see enough of is just practicing precision lob passes and practicing power shots. I think a lot of pro players are missing a few things. You see other pro players practicing it quite a lot, but I think a lot of pro players are missing just practicing power shots. But if you've got a top tier player, you can just start spamming power shots outside the box. But this would have been the perfect angle for precision lob pass just about here. So what I will do is I will do about a left down, a low left land, left down long sticks just about here. And I'll aim it about here because what happens is when you add power into that, the ball is realistically going to go about here. So this would be the R1 plus square. This is a precision lob pass and you get the ball exactly where your left analog stick is. This is accurate to your left analog stick, but this would allow the ball to get here and bounce the ball. If you are a pro player and you are watching this, do try this. It's very, very effective, especially in these situations. If you're part of the Patreon, there's a video on how to do these unstoppable um, lob passes with precision lob passing, where I explain how to do it with the fallback, where you can basically get an unmarked ball going forward. As it goes up to the second half, you can see this playing a bit more simple now. This is the time now you've got to start thinking about the final attack. You can see Davies making that run in behind. Anders gets taken there. Then you can see Anders defending the situation. Ball gets past Haaland. Haaland just playing for time now. Brings the ball back. Brings the ball in. And here's a finesse shot territory or a long shot. And that's very, very unlucky. Just trying to ping that ball. Uh, maybe I'm anticipating here um, a finesse shot maybe so maybe Anders he's thinking Anders is going to move this side and therefore he's trying to catch him on the near post angle but unfortunately missed the timing but you can see this is where Anders does get destroyed I would say a lot by PH Zinn it makes it very very hard to defend against because he triggers that player early baits that player he just baits that player waits 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 creates a three verse two and then even though he pushes Haaland that's why maybe you're having um, Haaland or not stay central maybe having him some getting behind for Pete Zinn might be beneficial because then that way sometimes Haaland can come support down the wing maybe that's something that Pete Zinn does in his tactics I am not too sure uh, but you can see again playing for time brings the ball back around and uh, you can see here um, and as the right thing here he's cutting that passing lane out you see that cutting that passing lane out as soon as he can stop the chance going because you're doing one or two things here you're stopping the pass going from Mbappe and you're also stopping the shot, which makes it a very effective way of defending that solution. Again, kickoff now, not kickoff, kickoff, uh, goal kick being safe. Now, again, you could do the L1 triangle with your left back, push your full back going forward. I'm presuming Anders will do that. One, two, you can see then. A bit unlucky. So you see just about here at this point. A bit unlucky. Um, very good play from Pierre Zinn actually over here. Uh, Anders. When he got the ball, this is why I say when you take a touch, you've got to take a touch away. Um, remember, I said to you, when you take a touch upwards, you're taking the risk of the opponent getting the ball. So, the safest pace to take a touch would have been backwards. Um, but I understand to get the attack moving, that's the way they do it. So, I would just always be careful here. I mean, this is what I would advise you. Maybe at pro levels, it's completely different. They know the exact angle, what they want to do. But I would say here, you got to, you got to take a touch like this as opposed to taking a touch upwards because the opponent gets the right way, you could be in trouble. And most of the time, people are going to go upwards as well to get the ball into the middle. And you can see here Mbappe gets the ball, lose the ball, nice through ball, plays for time, and then unluckily goes for the Traveller. And you can see, look, have a look at Anders' face. He's seeing it and he moves the goalkeeper. You see that? This is the smallest of fractions. Make, he commits with Maldini, but he knows the ball is over there. He sees the ball. As soon as that ball roll comes in, that is a telltale sign. Travella's coming up next. So you can see, for example, like here, gets the ball in Mbappe, does the ball roll on the inside, sees that, and sees the goalkeeper make that movement upwards. And you can see that's what stops that Travella. So you can see that right hand lock. So you can see like here. So as soon as you see it here, 
the right analog stick, just move it, shift it one foot upwards, one step upwards is enough to defend the Traveller. Um, I would say make sure you don't move it this way because a lot of people do is they move it this way. That means the ball can go over the goalkeeper and they can't catch it. So you want to basically move it upwards like this and that way the goalkeeper moves along. Don't move forward, you want the goalkeeper to move along the position. That way that's the best chance of defending that shot. This is one quick tip. Now around about this time you've got to start thinking about the final attack, holding the ball for the final attack. So you can see KDB gets the ball, Mbappe got the ball, Norwood passed and presumably is going to go back now and do a 1-2 to run up to R9. Gets the ball going forward. Now Peter's in there. This is a time to go for the final attack. So what I'll do is I'll hold the ball here. You can see Peter's in is doing that. He's going for the final attacks. He's waiting for 45 minutes. Because at 45 minutes, let's say there's one minute added on. If you have the ball at 45 minutes, and let's say it's 45 minutes and 30 seconds, if you go initiate your attack and you go forward, you can be in this situation, go for the final attack. And if you lose the ball, the game ends. So you can effectively just push as many players as you want, get a free final attack risk-free and not have to worry. So you can see Peter's in going for that, has the ball over there with Davies waiting for the final attack you can see here and is trying to get the ball back here. Does that one too, but he sees now that Davies has now made that run. You see that making that run and you can see here Mbappe has moved inwards. Now he's created that basically that three versus two down the wing again and then makes that pass, goes for it. Maybe makes the wrong pass here in this situation here. Here I'd probably say that's a driven pass. I probably wouldn't have done that. He should have made a pass like that, kept it safe because then Anders now is the final attack. Anders is the final attack. Not waiting because he's got a counter attack. Gets the ball here. A step over should be enough. And then Alexia then gets that goal over there. Just about there. Nice touch and takes a shot. That's what team of the year players can do. They can do damage. And that is basically the game set a match. But you can see, for example, I'm pretty sure that um, he knows himself here. He should never have made that mistake. This mistake was made, I think, over here. Just go for the final attack, especially in the final. You know, here, don't make that mistake here if you're not too sure. Like, if it, maybe he was worried about Alexia getting the, not getting the ball or whatever. Then just do a lob pass here and then do that 1-2 or bring the ball backwards. Lob pass, take a touch and then do a 1-2 backwards. You keep it safe. But that's the mistake that was made. They should not have made a driven pass forward there. Maybe a mistake, a big mistake from PH Zinn. I'm pretty sure he knew that. But that is why you've got to keep it safe in that situation. And that is the end of the half. Taking Anders into the league, into the lead, should I say, um, into the into the second half. So that's something just very, very important to bear in mind. So make sure you don't lose the ball. And that's trying to say even on the pro level, everyone's going to make mistakes. But don't make mistakes in your own half. Even at pro level, sometimes as you can see here, it's almost very hard to defend. Very good capitalization from Anders. And I'll be honest, I love the kid's arrogance. Uh, if I, I'll be honest, he's like, the, he's like the Mourinho of the FC Pro event. But that is the FC Pro final analysis. That's part one. In fact, if you're watching this on YouTube, this main video, the rest of the series will be on my Patreon. So it's patreon.com forward slash no guys if you want to see more videos like this and more analysis of the full game. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.